Good evening. Welcome to St. Matthew's United Methodist Church Simple Prayer Service. We're so glad you could join us tonight. You may follow along with our service by clicking on the link on our Facebook page. I'm Becky Wittick, and again, welcome to our time of prayer and reflection. Please join me for the lighting of the Christ candle. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Light no darkness can extinguish. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good to thank you, O God, for the gift of your glorious light, shining at the dawn of creation, guiding us through the wilderness, leading us to the land of promise. You sent Jesus, light of the world, to be our way of truth and life. Help us to follow him each day and rest in him each night until at last we may come to dwell in your realm of endless light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and in the unity of Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever and ever. Amen. Please join us in our hymn tonight, number 685, Now on Land and Sea Descending. chapter 4. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, 
because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading Psalm 116 responsibly. I love the Lord who has heard my voice in supplication. He turned his ear to me whenever I call. The snares of death encompassed me. The jaws of hell laid hold of me. And I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, God save me. Return my soul to your rest. The Lord has dealt with you wonderfully. God delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I walk before the Lord in the land of the living. The Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said, Woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and herbs of all kinds, and neglect justice and the love of God. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. Woe to you Pharisees, for you love to have the seat of honor in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. Woe to you. For you are like unmarked graves, and people walk all over them without realizing it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us too. And he said, Woe also to you lawyers, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not lift a finger to ease them. The Gospel of the Lord. So the definition of woe is great sorrow or distress. Jesus is saying, it is with great sorrow, Pharisees, that you love the best seats in the house. And then he says, you give your money. But what you should be more concerned about, what's more important, is that you neglect justice and the love of God. Why does Jesus single out the teachers and lawyers with great sorrow? Jesus was distressed with the religious leaders because they were not listening to God's word and they misled the people they were supposed to guide in the ways of God. Their interpretations of God's laws were so filled with burdensome rules that they obscured the more important matters of religion, such as love and love of neighbor. 
They were very attentive to minute manners of little importance, but they neglected to care for the needy and weak. Jesus admonished them because their hearts were not right. They were filled with pride and contempt for others. They put unnecessary burdens on others while neglecting to show charity, especially to the weak and poor. What was the point of Jesus' lesson? The essence of God's love, of the essence of God's commandments is love. Love of God and love of neighbor. God is love and everything he does flows from his love for us. Love both embraces and lifts the burdens of others. These are some difficult times for many people. There are neighbors who are still unemployed but have to pay rent or mortgage. Many are worried about what will happen if they get this virus. With no health insurance, who will pay the hospital bills, doctor's bills, not to mention utilities and food? We have to do more and we have to do better. We were a great nation and I only say we were because even with all of our resources, we still have children going to bed hungry. We have parents scared for their families. We have people, some of who were sworn, sworn to protect, unjustly killing Americans because of their race. There are people not allowed to love who they want. In this world I just described, love is a rare and beautiful thing. I say love them anyway. People are so full of criticism and hate. Where is God in that hate? What has happened? How will we survive as a nation? And some families are just in survival mode. Is Jesus saying, whoa, America, whoa? Are we allowing the love of God to transform our minds and hearts? Are we following God's work? I ask you this tonight. Are you willing to carry your neighbor's burdens? Please join me in prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For our bishop,
for our pastor, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God and his church, for the special needs and concerns of our congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We remember all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Joining together in peace, let, let's pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us prepare to receive the benediction. May the Lord God always fill us with his grace and love. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us now and remain with us forever. Amen. Thank you.